The Adamant G7Ti, this is obviously a laptop, right? Because it's in a laptop box, it's got a laptop processor. Wait, it's got a 4070? It's not a laptop. It's a mini PC! Let's unbox. This is a 14900HX plus an RTX 4070. In a tiny little package? Wait a minute, 14900HX. Aren't those gonna have terrible voltage and degradation problems? Intel says not. Intel seems pretty confident. I'm looking for that. So far I don't see any evidence of that. This thing really is almost as if someone was designing a laptop and then decided the gaming laptop was just too Brobdingnagy and even before you add the keyboard and screen and they turned it into a mini PC. At the rear we've got USB Type-C, HDMI, one full-size Type-A port, and our 2.5 gigabit LAN, as well as our DC power brick. On the front we have a Type-A port and a, and a full-size SD reader and another Type-A port. Got a fan control button and a power button at the top. I think I would have liked to have seen more I.O. Especially for as much horsepower as this thing has. What a satisfying ratcheting sound, LTTstore.com. <laughs> yes, the LTT shooter. Oh, and I made that one myself at LTX, so that was fun. I got to pretend that I was a social creature for a time. So the 14900HX is exactly the same layout as you'd expect. Eight performance cores and 16 efficiency cores. 24 cores, 32 threads total. The BIOS design of this I've noticed is unique and it is fairly open. It's not super locked down. It is a customized BIOS. It's a nice graphical BIOS. This is similar to what you would find on a mid-range gaming motherboard. Disassembly and maintenance is pretty easy. You gotta take three screws out of the bottom and then the back of this, where the regulatory stickers are, snaps off. Be really careful with it. It's just a plastic snapping mechanism. There's not really a lot to it. And you can see internally, you got your CMOS battery here. You got a 22110 that you can install stuff in. This does support Intel VMD, so you could set up a RAID 1 or a RAID 0 volume for redundancy. Uh, you got two cooling fans here and your DDR5 memory here. As configured, this has 32 gigabytes of DDR5. You can upgrade that all the way to 96 gigabytes after the fact if you want. And there's lots of cooling in here. Lots of big thick heat pipes and some large heat sinks. That's nice to see. You may be wondering, where is the other SSD? It's actually underneath this one. So you'd have to take this heat sink off and then you could access the built-in M.2. So if you wanted to put in two four terabyte M.2s in here and run them in RAID 0 for eight terabytes of storage, you totally could do that. The Wi-Fi is also modular, so if you prefer a particular wireless adapter, if you want to run Wi-Fi 8 whenever that comes out, it's swappable. You can just change it right here. There's also a lot of room in here if you had to put another set of antennas or something like that. The top being plastic would be good for you in terms of wireless reception. Uh, the sides being metal, not so much. And after using this thing for about a week, I gotta say, it is a fun little machine. Okay. Let's be honest with ourselves here. This is basically a laptop motherboard crammed in an external case. The most fun size version of this is what Framework is doing with their laptops. So when you upgrade a Framework laptop, you can get an extra case, like Cooler Master, I think, sells a case that you can put an old laptop motherboard in and then use that like a desktop computer. Well, this is like that from the factory, except it's also a modern 14900HX, and this performs better than the best 14900HX plus 4070 laptop out there that you can get. But it still performs like a 14900HX and a 4070 laptop edition GPU that you can get. And remember the 4070 laptop is not the same as a 4070 desktop, that's a little misleading. So I had to do CPU and GPU benchmarks. First off, CPU and productivity benchmarks. Boy, this thing really stacks up. They've really fine-tuned it. If we look at our Geekbench scores, 2755 and over 14,000, 14,544 for the multi-core score in Geekbench. 14900HX is basically a desktop CPU that operates at lower voltage than everything else. In case you're wondering, there was the whole Intel kerfuffle where there's degradation, oxidation, things degrade over time. That seems to be voltage related and it's related to boost behavior. As this is a laptop chip, the voltages that it requests are lower, considerably lower. That should be within the safe envelope of the CPU to prevent it from degrading. In terms of A to 64, this might be the best A to 64 results that we have ever gotten from any mini PC from anybody. This is DDR5 5600 from Crucial, and this platform is configured with optimal DDR5 settings, and so that means that our latency is under 90 nanoseconds. It's a Christmas miracle. CPU-Z's benchmark, hardware info 64, everything lines up about where you'd expect. 
There is one anomaly, however. In Hardware Info 64, I noticed that when I had this thing going at full tilt for 20 minutes or so, it did start to thermal throttle. And its thermal throttle temperature set point seems to be around 89 degrees C. It can actually take a little more, but in order to do that, it has to really ramp the fan speeds. There's a button on the front of the device that you can hit and then you will hear the fan noise. It's, it's, it's not annoyingly loud, but it is loud. But understand, the thermal throttling that's here is the type of thermal throttling that prevents higher boosting and other performance. So you're basically leaving some performance on the table here. As Hardware Info 64 reports, this is a configuration for around 85 watts. There is a little bit more headroom here. This configuration is not going to let you overclock or push the envelope any iota, or if you do, it's going to risk the integrity of the CPU because then we're back into the degradation voltage thing that it affects 13th and 14th generation Intel CPUs. It's unnecessary, don't do it. If you want a mini PC that can game competently, the 4070, so we're talking like 1080p, 60 to 90 FPS, depending on AAA or older titles, no, well, I mean, you know, let's let's say no ray tracing that's not strictly true but the game performance overall is pretty good and we'll get into specific game benchmarks in a second but as long as you're not really really pushing this thing it's good a gaming desktop computer is going to be better in every way even if you have to get a 4060 ti and a lesser cpu like an i5 that is going to be a better gaming experience but the physical envelope for this is pretty darn good speaking of the physical envelope i really would have liked to have seen more ports we have our USB 4, that is Thunderbolt, that is confirmed, so you can run Thunderbolt devices off of this. You could use a Thunderbolt dock and break out a couple more displays, but it would have been nice to see more. So you can use that uh, USB-C to DisplayPort adapter, you can use a USB-C Thunderbolt adapter to multiple DisplayPort adapters, run two 4K60 plus your HDMI through a Thunderbolt type interface, that is okay. But there is no native DisplayPort connector here, and I really think they missed out by not having more USB Type-A on the back and maybe an extra display port. There are more USB Type-A on the front as well as a full-size micro SD card reader. So for like a dual monitor video editor machine, especially a portable video, like an on-location video editor machine, and if you're mostly editing 1080p video, this is a pretty nice little machine because you can configure it with two full-size NVMe drives, plus you've got the upgradable memory up to 96 gigabytes. That's a pretty good amount of flexibility. The 4070 is going to rock inside of something like uh, Adobe or uh, DaVinci Resolve. You've also got QuickSync. Remember, because the 14900HX is basically a full-size desktop CPU, so you get the iGPU options. And you do have all the options in BIOS for configuring the memory to be a little faster or configuring the iGPU or whatever you want to do with the system configuration. I am sorely tempted to get some of the PTM thermal tabs from Linus's store, lttstore.com to replace the thermal paste that's in this thing and see if that does any better. See if that brings our thermal throttling under control because you saw the sheer amount of copper mass and heat pipe in our cooling solution. We may just be looking at a paste issue and we're only looking at a paste issue at the very highest end, people that really want to squeeze out that last two or three percent performance. As far as I can tell, the actual gaming benchmarks across Baldur's Gate 3, Starfield, and a couple of other games is where it should be for a laptop sized 4070 GPU and when I'm gaming I generally don't see the throttling thing pop up it's only really heavy intense workloads like your Cinebench type benchmarks after it's been running for a few minutes that you get those messages that's the full skinny on the G7 Ti from Adamant it's a competent execution I think I would have liked to have seen an even more insane over-the-top cooling solution because with that 4900HX, it is basically a desktop class CPU. And a desktop class CPU running at what is effectively an undervolt because it's designed for a laptop can still give you more performance and more boost behavior and more everything else. But remember from Hardware Info 64, we saw that it's not really using a lot of watts. That's also nice because you're at the optimum place on the efficiency curve. So if you don't want a machine that's sitting on the floor that's you know, belching 300 watts of heat all the time, this is a good option. You're on the performance versus power curve with that 14900HX, you're, you're getting the optimal uh, CPU per unit electricity in that configuration. So there's a lot to like there. There's also a lot to like just because it's a mini PC. It's small, it's out of the way, you can just run it, it's really good. 
So it's been really interesting to look at. G7TI from Adam Matt. I'm Wendell, this is level one. If there's any other tests you want me to run on this or see something in terms of a particular configuration or whatever, let me know in the forums at level one text. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, and I'll see you there.